Just getting started is always the hard part. Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of robertoblake.com helping you create something awesome today. So today we're gonna to talk more about personal branding and I think that a great foundation for building your personal brand is to start a website. In an age where we all have different social media outlets and great platforms like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and even YouTube, a lot of people still underestimate the power that a website has for your personal brand and for your online business. If you are still building your personal brand, even if you don't have a product to sell, even if you haven't considered an email list, it's still important to have a website so when people perform a Google search, they can find you specifically. You also wanna have a platform that you own and that you control. When YouTube or Facebook or Twitter change the rules or if something should happen to your account, you want a place to call home. You want a place where you're still in charge and where your people can still find you. So I'm gonna give you my six step process for starting your own website. You're gonna be able to build this thing from scratch and we're gonna talk about some other things that having your own website is gonna allow you to do. The first part of starting your website is gonna to be to have what they call a domain name. This is the .com, .net, or .org where people are gonna type this into their web browser and they're gonna be able to find you. In my case, many, many years ago, maybe a decade ago, I started robertoblake.com because I'd done other websites before, but I wanted something specific so that when people searched for me professionally, they could find me and it could host my portfolio. It would help me with uh, jobs that I was trying to get. In fact, it's actually how I got my job at an ad agency was through people being able to find a graphic designer like me through my website since that's what I was doing in my career at the time. Over time, I've used this now to help me get speaking engagements and also clients for my consulting business. So it's actually been very beneficial for me and it's also given people who wanna interview me for podcast or for articles, a place where they can find some background information. So having your own website has a lot of benefits, especially when it's time for people to just find out more information about you. So no matter what, I would still get a website with your name. Even if your name is common and it's taken, consider adding something to your website name that uh, uh, particularly makes you stand out. Like if your name was John Smith, maybe instead of johnsmith.com, which is definitely for sure taken, maybe it's uh, John M. Smith, or maybe it's John Smith Photography, or johnsmithphotovideo.com. By adding some context to the domain name, even if it makes it a little longer, it's usually worth it, can help you stand out, and can make people identify you and what you specifically have to offer. I went with my name, my complete name, because one, it's long enough, and two, my personal brand has grown and evolved, and I've changed my career path from being a freelancer, designer, art director, to being a creative entrepreneur that has a lot of things that they do under their business umbrella. So I didn't want to paint myself into a corner, and that's why I went ahead and just used my full name. Having this domain name is also gonna let you set up a professional email address. I recommend that you use uh, either your first name, or your first initial, your last name, something like that. Or you also can consider setting up some defaults like info at yourwebsite.com or mail at yourwebsite.com, billing at yourwebsite.com. Just whatever you want and whatever is allowed with the web hosting company you're with, which is gonna bring us to step number two. In addition to a domain name, you need a web hosting company. Usually domains and web hosting go hand in hand. I recommend Bluehost and you can go to robertoblake.com slash Bluehost. They're not a sponsor of today's video, but they are a friend of the channel and they are an affiliate link that supports the channel. So if you wanna start your website and you wanna sign up a domain and get hosting, I would definitely recommend them. Uh, one of the reasons I do recommend them is if you're not a very technical person, this is gonna be an easy process for you, an easy website to use. And when you speak to someone uh, customer service wise, uh, it's usually someone based right here in the US. If you are here in the US, if you're somebody abroad, they typically are speaking English, so maybe that's helpful to you in your business. If your domain name is your address, then your web hosting is your actual house or apartment, and you're renting this, you actually can put anything you want here, just like you could put your own furniture, your files, your images, your content, this is where it lives. This is where you're housing that, and so I think that's a really good analogy for this because your personal brand is about how much of the online real estate you're gonna get. Social media places are a borrowed space, this is something of your own that you have a lot more control over. They're, you're using their venue, their platform. It'd be like renting out an event hall or something like that. This is yours. This is a place for you to call home. 
Typically, with a low-level hosting account, you can host usually two or three websites without any real problem, especially if you're only getting you know, thousands of people or tens of thousands of people in terms of traffic every month. So I wouldn't worry about getting the highest priced web hosting out there. I just don't think you need it, especially for you just getting started. You have a couple options here. If you're tech savvy like me and you know HTML and web design coding, you can completely build this yourself. But if not, with step three, I recommend that you do one of two things. Either use a website builder, which they have, and you can use that and it's image-based, or use WordPress. WordPress is a blogging system. It's what's called a content management system, and it's pretty easy since they have a one-click install, and then you can pick themes, you can lay it out, you can design it, or you can hire a web designer and someone who can put that together for you. Uh, I have some links in the description below uh, for websites where you can find people that you can hire for this. My recommendation when it comes to hiring a web designer is if you can afford it, work directly with a web designer and find somebody that a friend or uh, an associate of yours has used in the past for their website and work with that person because they're already in your network. But if not, and you need to hire a freelancer, then again, you can use some of the recommendations in the description below. Uh, you can go to places like Upwork, you can go to places like 99designs, and you can try your luck there, and it should work out just fine. Just make sure that you're looking at somebody who has a decent portfolio of work, and I don't anticipate any major problems there. You also have to at least know what you want. Which kind of rounds us out to step number four, the actual design of your website. When you're designing your website, you have to take a few things into consideration. Uh, you may need to go ahead and have your photography in place. You might also have some graphics or logos that represent you, or you may need to have these things built out for you. When I was building my website, I could produce all these things myself because of my background in graphic design. I had plenty of photos of me already laying around, and I shot some more, and I made my own custom graphics for my website. I was able to make it what I want because I have those skills. Like I said, if you don't, don't. You could always get somebody else, but don't underestimate the power of using a really good template. Templates are a dime a dozen, and yeah, everybody has them, and your thing may look a little cookie cutter, but when you're just getting started, the important thing is to have something in place that can represent you. You can make it fancy later. When I first started, mine wasn't anything special, but it did get the job done. So resist the urge to be fancy right out the gate. This is gonna be with you for a long time, so it can grow, it can evolve, it can progress. Step number five is to add your content. Usually, if it's a website for your personal brand, the content's gonna be very minimal. It's gonna be an about section, it's gonna be a contact page with your contact info, and it may be some kind of body of work. This might be your portfolio, this might be your demo reel, this might be a list of your prior speaking engagements, whatever represents your personal brand. You should have this thought out in advance, and then later, you can add what's called a blog. You can go ahead and write articles and you can post updates to this. And that's what I like about WordPress. You can do this with other systems or you can do this manually, but I really recommend WordPress because it just makes things simpler and you don't have to learn a lot of technical, complicated stuff to manage it. It is very straightforward. You don't need to have every article planned out in advance, but I would think that if you're doing a, a blog, if you're building a personal brand, there is some content that you should have in place that can represent you well and show your skills and show what you're about and what your interests are. So I would think about these things in advance. If you don't have them when you launch the website, that's perfectly fine, but try to get these things in place as quickly as you can. Make sure you have a plan for the content that you wanna put out there that's gonna be shared with the world. Finally, step number six. This one is slightly more complicated, but it doesn't have to be. You'll want to use Google Analytics and set that up on your website. Having a website is great, being able to get visitors and traffic and people commenting on your blog or joining your email list or hiring you for your services or giving you that job that you want is amazing. But you know what's really important? Analytics and tracking data. Knowing how people found you, knowing where they were looking for you, knowing what pages they spent the most time on, knowing if there's a website that's driving referral traffic to you. These things are all important and that's what Google Analytics is gonna tell you. And it's really simple. You can copy and paste uh, Google Analytics into your website. You can set it up in WordPress, usually with a plugin or a click of a button, or you can very affordably for like, a, like tens of dollars, get somebody to just set this up for you. And then you can just take the time to try to learn the analytics that are 
YouTube videos that cover it, and it will be helpful for you to just kind of understand what's going on with your website and where your traffic is coming from and what people want from you, especially if you're creating content and blog articles. You'll want to know what your most popular topics are. You'll want to know whether or not this is driving people to a sale or not if you happen to be selling something. Maybe you want to know who's buying your book or who's downloading your free guide. Maybe you'll want to know who's buying your book or downloading your free guide. I think all this stuff is important, so having those analytics in place is a critical step six. And again, this is the basic process for starting and launching a website. Obviously, there's so much more I could get into, but I wanted to at least help you understand what this could look like for you and what your basic steps are. So that's my six-step process for starting your own website. You can obviously take this so much further. There are things you can do with your marketing, especially if you're a small business owner. There are things that you can set up to help you build an email list. I just didn't want to cover all of that at once and overwhelm you. I will be covering a lot of those topics in more of these getting started videos and more of my topics that teach you about personal branding and how you can develop and grow your online presence. If you still have questions about building your first website, then definitely let me know in the comment section and I'll try and make videos that can help you out if there's something that I didn't cover here. Remember, I have recommended links for all the things we discussed in the description below, including recommendations for web hosting companies that are very affordable and reliable that I use for many of my websites and I think they'll help you out too. I'm also gonna include a, a link for my free ebook, The Seven Points of Personal Branding Mini Guide. This might help you get a sense of what your personal brand is and how you can develop it. It's pretty much the, the thesis for how I developed and grew and approached my personal brand, how I defined it, how I became uh, more self-aware of what it is that I had to offer all of you. This will probably help many of you if you're getting started trying to build your online presence. So that's my free gift to you when you join the Create Awesome Community newsletter. Links are in the description below and also in the annotation. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome stuff on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching, and don't forget, create something awesome today. Take care.